our future is. I mean, nobody thought I'd be a mayor of a city, but I was. <laughs> nobody thought I'd be an electrical engineer, but I am. You know, I mean, and I, went, I graduated here. I mean, so it's possible for anybody to be anything. I mean, just vote yes if you can. Thank you. Thanks. Next up, Joni Francisco. <laughs> Um, and this isn't the first letter that I've attempted to write to the board and to the people. I just never can express fully how I want to say it. But I also just think that we really do need to find this place that we can start from, that we can all agree. Um, a united goal, a united mission, and that we can all hold that for our youth and our community. As I see it, it really should be about the kids and not just some of the kids that align with your values and your virtues, but all the kids. It, everybody's family is different. We all align differently. Do things need to change? Probably. There's always room for improvement anywhere and in education. And I have a growth mindset, and we really don't know what's possible until we research all the possible solutions, right? So if we start there, what could be possible for our school district and its students? What amazing things could be available to them? How can we find other funding, private money, or levies? But we don't have that luxury today. And I would, I would implore that the board can explore and give to all of us how you're gonna support a five-year strategic plan without funding. We've already approved the plan, right? So we need to fund it. And then thinking about the kids that are already in school, the juniors and seniors, who are already deeply in this educational construct as it stands. They're not to blame for how we got here, how many years it took to get here but we're gonna implode their system in one day by not putting a levy on a ballot and not having a sustainable plan for their future? And what about all those kids in our community that almost 200 years later are coming from parents and homes where their parents cannot read and write, just like Abraham Lincoln, and if he wouldn't have been, had, um, been able to reach out to public education, he may not have been also the president of the United States if he had not learned to read and write. And I feel like if not putting the levy on the ballot, you are taking away a right to vote. Like you're taking okay. away a right. All right, next up, uh, Dana Douglas. Dana Douglas. Um, I've been a member of this community for over 30 years. I volunteered in West Barnard County Schools for over 20 years. Um, my husband graduated from West Barnard County. Both my kids have graduated West Barnard County. I currently don't have any children, but I have grandkids coming up. I still support the school and I still support all of the youth in my community. That's what a community member does. They support. Um, I'm here to ask you guys to run a levy for our children of our community. Um, everyone is coming from different areas and everyone thinks they, knows they know what is best. But every family is different. Not everyone can stay home and homeschool their children. Everyone needs a help and a hand every once in a while. And, and our schools do that in so many ways. I also... I, I, I just really want you guys to understand. I, the last time I came up here, I talked about our district and how big it was. And so I, I researched and I got some information. So I want you to know that, did you know that West Bonner County has five schools? We have five schools in this district. Do you understand that 21 bus, buses travel an average of 1,124 miles each day? These buses transport um, 675 kids. Sorry, my phone. Um, the, our district spends $700,000 on transportation, but guess what? The state only gives us $400,000. So I, those numbers are just real basic, so you can see. So there's a three, $300,000 shortfall. So where does that money come from? It comes from these levies. That money comes from these levies. It, it makes sense. You, you can't 
you can't just say we're not going to fund what's going to what's not going to be available for these kids some it's not going to work we need to show our kids that they matter we need to all come together and put all this grief behind us and we need to support our children of the community please vote for the levy <coughs> Next up is Car Katie. Is it Carly? Yep. Curly. Carly. 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 Hi, my name is Carly Carrillo. I'm an alumni of Priest River um, business owner in town currently. I'm asking you, the board, to run the levy for the $6 million option. Um, Keith, you spoke about how you weren't going to put your name on anything. Um, when we're looking at a $12,000 per student cost. Well, I want to present you with some facts about that. Um, first, anyone home viewing this, that was a very rough number. Two, that was not a per student dollar value. That was had to include maintenance, other costs, that had nothing to do with children. Um, if you're concerned about comparing numbers to other districts, which most people are, um, you can't compare our district to surrounding area districts because of how different square mileage-wise large we are. If you want to look at numbers, you should be looking at the mill rate. Um, for people at home who don't know what mill rate is, it's equal for to $1 um, for every $1,000 value um, assessed property value. So here are some facts. In 2021, when we passed our levy, um, Kellogg's levy rate, they passed $4. Um, Lakeland, $225. Lake Ponderay, $210. Boundary County, $190. Lastly, us. Bonner County at $1.47. We were the lowest out of all of the surrounding areas. Why? Because we aren't asking for new facilities. We're asking for bare minimum from our community to fund our schools. Um, the new levy rate with the $6 million would be $1.55. Again, the lowest we're asking out of surrounding areas. Um, we are asking taxpayers for less money than everyone else. Me, personally, you can't put a number on student education, but factually, that's the least. It's a fact that 92 out of 115 Idaho schools have a supplemental levy. Our district isn't the problem, it's the state funding. In fact, 2006, the state funding mechanism shifted. The mandatory $3, again, we were $1.57, um, per 1,000 assessed value was removed. Instead, school funding is now supported by sales tax, meaning this levy costs you less money if they fully funded our school and education. Um, so let's stop using that as an excuse okay, to not support our schools. Put this levy to a vote and support our kids, not your wallets. Okay, next up is, is it Le Leanne James, or is it Dean James? James Dean. James Dean. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be a little. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you, board. Um, I had a prepared talk, but having listened to uh, the discussion, no one here doesn't like kids. I could elaborate on that, but trust me, no one doesn't like kids. And education is not or should not be have some dollar amount. It should be the quality of education and how well we're training kids to be part of society. I, I have intimate knowledge of a little kid who back in the 1950s went to a school in the desert of Arizona that didn't have air conditioning. They had what some people may be familiar with, swamp coolers evaporative coolers. The word evaporative and cooler shouldn't be connected at all. <laughs> there were no paid parking lots. There was an open irrigation ditch next to the playground. The bas two basketball courts were outside and they were dirt. No pay. I Don't ask me what they put, what kind of Agent Orange they sprayed on those to keep the weeds down. Um, but the kids that went to that school were taught basics. They were taught uh, what needed to be taught. 
um, there was a principal, no vice principal, there were two administrative individuals, there was no counselor, there was a nurse, uh, there was a physical edu education coach, and a, and a maintenance guy. Time's up. One, one teacher per classroom. Didn't hurt those kids a bit. Sorry I talked too long. <laughs> Kathy Nash. Hey, giving you a copy just in case I happen to go over my two minutes. Because I want you to get the whole message and not just part of it. Kathy Nash, for the record. I want to have a disclaimer. I wrote this earlier today. I've learned some other information, so some of it may be a little off, but I'm hoping to be accurate. This district has a spending problem for years. The budget has always been padded with extra wants, and the district has never had full accountability for their spending. People throughout our state are tired of the tax and spend mentality of the government agencies, which includes this district. We spend more per student than any other district in the area, yet we have the smallest student population, which yes, means we get less from the state than any other district. Therefore, we continue to put the difference on the backs of the local community. Before we saddle the community with a levy, there needs to be a forensic audit of our books for a minimum of the last five to 10 years. From credit card spending to the moving around of funds by journal entries, the board has never seen a true accounting of expenditures with line items for matching the budgets. <coughs> the policy for separation of duties requirements have never been met or even strived for. There are people here tonight that don't want to levy at all. We are all being told that without a minimum of a $4.7 .7 million levy, teachers will quit, buildings will be mothballed, and the education of the children will be at risk. This has been the threat for as many levies as I have been following these levies. What is wrong with trying to have a reasonable budget and still serving the kids? A levy in May may not bring, will not bring this community into agreement on how this is to be accomplished. Why can't we delay a levy till November where more answers and a real knowledge of the amount needed? Yes, it does run the risk of staff leaving at the end of this school year, but I believe those who are truly doing this for the kids will remain and help us with successful in this journey. Uh, next is Nikki uh, Narek. Narek. Nah. Nikki Nack. Nikki Nack. Sorry. Okay. What's your name? Nikki Nack Paddywhack. Hey, so I didn't even know that we got to talk tonight. So I am here, and I did not type something up, but I am here as a community member, as a mom, as somebody who went to school and started kindergarten in Mrs. Nakarado's class before she was even married. Had her again in second year, and then got to do some student teaching with her as well. And I now currently have been teaching preschool in my own program for 20 years even though I'm still only 20 years old. <laughs> I do have to say that kids are my absolute life. I have three of my own that go to school and attend school in the West Bonner County School District. And I chose to raise my family here in this town because I wanted to give them everything that I had had growing up. I was able to attend school, get a great education, go to college on scholarships that this community helped me be able to get. And I didn't pay one dime for college because I worked hard and I was given a great education and teachers who loved me and cared for me. And I want my kids to have the same thing. And part of that is to support our teachers, our educators, these buildings and this community with a levy. We need a levy and I ask of you guys to please, please take into consideration everything, not just the kids, the community, yourselves, all of it. Please, we ask of thee today, please run a levy. Thank you. Uh, 
Cassie Anderson. Is that you? I was going to say she has two names. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Cassie Anderson. I'm newer to the community, so I'll have a different perspective, but um, I have two boys that are in the West Bonner County School District and one that goes to daycare, soon to be in preschool. Um, and we love it up here. We grew up in Hayden. We moved up here because it, it's beautiful, right? It kept growing down there and all these needs kept changing and all this craze, right? But we love the community piece, so we wanted to be able to have that impact within our own community as well. So with that, coming up here, I got my taxes this last year, right? And I could not believe that it was only $200, a little less than $200 for our school taxes. Like, it was astronomical. I actually called the school and asked, and you remember that, I called, yeah. I was like, is that accurate? Because that's ridiculous. We should be paying more for our kids. They need more. Um, they deserve more. And coming from a district that still didn't get by, didn't have enough at all in the Coeur d'Alene area and coming up here, you know, I see the need and their levy just failed. And now look at what's happening. There's possibility of sports being cut, um, mental health. I'm a social worker. I've looked at coming to work for the Bonner County School District because I want to be integrated in our community. But a big problem with that is I need to make sure I have a job because I have to support my kids too, right? So with that, the levy can help. I am completely supportive of the levy. I've come from where it's passed numerous times and been very helpful. And I would encourage everyone to just think about that and um, hope to bring more uh, people to our community that want to give back and grow our community as we raise our children. So thank you. Okay. That's all the public comments I have sheets for. So. Public comment time is closed. Uh, next up uh, on the agenda, um, I need a motion to bring to the table establish long term planning committee. I will make a motion um, to establish long term planning committee junior high school facility solutions to the table. Okay. No, we made we made the switch. The gentleman. Okay. Um, bring it to the table. Okay. Trust, Trustee Hall uh, makes a motion to bring the uh, discussion to the table. Vice Chair um, Brown second. seconds. Okay. Um, and I think as we've talked before, it, and it's this will uh, allow potentially the opportunity to talk about junior high school facility solutions. We know that it's it's got a lot of issues, and I think Ken was maybe Can going to say, Ken, something say something about it. Sure. Uh, good evening, Ken Elder. I'm the director of facilities uh, for the school district. Uh, working with the board uh, through this uh, short-term funding process for the maintenance and operations levy, uh, we have identified the need uh, for improvements at Priest River Junior High School and facilities throughout the school district. And there's been a lot of uh, conversations recently about what those solutions are and I can say officially from the school district standpoint um, we we do not have a plan for uh, making those capital improvements at this time what we want to do is start this capital improvement planning committee that's going to be community based that we can work through all of the different trustee zones so we get good representation across our entire West Bonner County School District and together, through the course of the summer, start to identify all of the different aspects of what those facility improvements would be would look like, different options, so that we have a school district organization that is working in tandem with what the community wants to see as far as outcomes. Uh, we're very serious about moving forward on that this summer. Uh, I look forward to working with you to uh, bring about some very, very positive changes to our school facilities. So. Um, Please stay tuned. We will be initiating that uh, uh, before the school year is out. Thank you. Okay. And, um, okay. Chair Rutledge, I wanted to point out that this is directly under the strategic plan and Correct. the facilities pillar that we are trying to adhere to that and move that forward. So, do you need a? We need an official so motion. We're, what we're going to do is vote on it now. Okay. All those in favor of establishing a long-term 
Planning Committee for the Junior High School Facility Solutions. Say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Uh, next on the docket is uh, uh, consideration and approval of the May 16th levy ballot resolution. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to bring the <coughs> consideration and approval of the May 16th levy ballot resolution to okay. the table. Trustee, that. Trustee Hall makes a motion. Uh, <coughs> Trustee Barton seconds. Uh, any comments? Um, I, I guess, Steffi, is there any more? I don't know if, since this is the official m meeting time, I think we still need to finalize and look at the numbers and finalize those numbers. Um, Do you like me to pull up the draft? With, the, the, with the, um, the public, we need to kind of <laughs> finalize what we're looking at and what the options that we, the, the other options that we looked at, just so that we can make a motion. Um, we can make a motion correctly. And I guess. Um, I guess we there were actually three options that we've been looking at. Yes. Um, and maybe Steffi, would you go in? I guess can I? May I ask Steffi to yes, put please. a little bit more information so that the rest of the public who might not have been here even through all our work sessions are familiar with what we just So the board went through. through a series of nine work sessions in total starting in the beginning of February and through those nine work sessions the board looked Could at Could you speak up a little higher please? Yes. We can't actually hear back to Oh sorry. <coughs> Bring on my something voice. Okay so outdoor, outdoor voice thank you. <laughs> so we have, we, the board went through a series of nine work sessions, starting with identifying the needs as they are aligned with in the five-year strategic plan or the school district's business plan. Uh, from there, the board identified, like I said, those needs. And in this uh, Excel document, uh, there was option one, two, and three as directed by the board. The body here uh, went through the needs of the that that the board had identified starting with athletics co-curricular and extracurricular activities the board heard a proposal and then identified that in order to fully fund the components of that proposal that it would take this dollar amount uh, moving down to the SRO officer uh, likewise and then the salaries and benefits uh, the board that the board provided direction that on the classified salary schedule, which, which can be located on the West Bonner County School District website, um, needed to be increased, that base salary needed to be increased to $15. And in order to increase that base, it would represent approximately a 17.5% increase. And so that equates, after taking into consideration additional state funding, a shortfall of 1.6 uh, was certified state legislation came through that there would need to be an infusion of the base of approximately six thousand three hundred and fifty nine dollars carrying that base through our classified our certified salary schedule equates to this amount for our shortfall likewise with admin then the board collapsed those line items to provide this total. Um, teaching and learning, the board received a series of emails aligning each one of the current shortfalls as provided or the funding provided for uh, from the levy uh, and started with pillar one, pillar two, pillar three, pillar four, pillar five, and pillar six and identified that in order to carry out the current teaching, learning, um, and textbooks, materials, staff training, that it would be a minimum of 600,000. Um, we heard a presentation from our facility director asking for a minimum of $366,000, and our transportation director asking for uh, the replacement of one bus a year, which would be a bus acquisition of approximately $120,000. Uh, the board identified these amounts and then went to looking at the levy rates or the levy total amount. So the net, net taxable value of the district, that's a given, that's taken off of our uh, property assessment provided by the county. 
And this, this amount is reflecting the December 2022 amount. So the board gave direction and said that with these items, um, that they would like to see what it would look like if it was funded for $1.7 million based upon this net taxable value of our district property. It equates to this rate or per $100,000 would be 115.95, so $115.95. Um, and uh, Steffi, that one, please, in, that one indicates a 1.4 um, million plus dollar the shortfall with Correct. this amount. Correct. And through the series of work sessions, we've been able to identify um, in a in detail where that amount is, but in terms of where those cuts would be felt, it's a little bit harder to identify because those decisions have not been made. Um, so then the last work session, so the option two was using the rate from our approved 2021 levy to generate our annual levy amount and identified the, uh, the descriptions there or the body. And then the board entertained the idea for option three of what would it cost and what would it look like if the school district did not have to make any cuts for this projected uh, 2024 fiscal year. So then that brings us back to the, I guess up to, the last board work session, which was started at four o'clock today, where there was direction provided that the board, um, direction from the board was that maybe we need to consider reducing that shortfall amount. So there was direction that that levy amount <coughs> increase and that that be reflected in our uh, salaries and benefits for our classified staff. It sounded like the hope for that would be to look at efficiencies through the school district and identify the need there. And then, Am I missing something? No, but I think again, when you look at that levy resolution, the first one, athletics co-curricular, you know, let's oh, say sorry. there, and extra, extracurricular activities is pillar two, culture and climate, school resource officers is cultural two, pillar two of our strategic plan, the salaries and benefits to recruit and retain classified staff is pillar one. Um, salaries and benefits to recruit and retain certified staff is pillar one. Textbooks, learning, materials and staff training, that is also what pillar one. Of safety and security facilities is the facilities pillar. Um, and bus acquisition is the transportation pillar. So. Even though we, we have been trying very hard, we started from a point where we started with a strategic plan. We've asked Steffi, which is not what any other school district does in this state, mind you. We took the strategic plan and she broke the budget down by the pillars. And then we went back up to, and looked at the shortfall and then came back to try to put together. So we, the staff, um, the su former Superintendent Branham, <coughs> The leadership team put spend a lot of hours in reaching out to the community on that strategic plan, five-year strategic plan. Five strategic plan, and so we are looking at you know what can help kickstart that in moving that forward, because um, that would be if we did not vote for a levy of any sort, and at, at probably this level or the one right below it. All that work that has just been done would go out the window and be a year's worth of time not spent well. And a lot of time and hours and blood, sweat, and tears. Um, and that would be my comment on it. But I just want you people to know in the audience that this is lined up with a strategic plan and really making it, trying to make it work and keeping the quantum learning. The quantum learning will be under part of that and keeping that going and the four day work group of school week. Stephanie, would you mind going back through the three options and just clarifying <coughs> the shortfalls from the state? Uh, the the 1.4 and then where it would be on the Yes, the I think option. the best way to explain that though would be um, maybe speaking more to the fact that I provided the board with a booklet called the that I titled or labeled a budget book, I think. Yes. Um, 
And that includes. <laughs> we have different sides of them. <laughs> Very heavy. Um, yes. But created on a Saturday, those budget books for you. And uh, in those budget books, you have a tab uh, labeled revenue. And this revenue tab includes our foundation payment. Foundation payment is what the state provides us for funding. So that's our state revenue. Again, we have three funding sources or three revenue sources. That's state, local, which is our levy, and federal. And our levy or local control comprises 33% um, with that 4.7. Um, the past audit, it showed that our levy equated to 31% of our general operating budget. And so uh, I think the best indicator of where these shortfalls come from would be the email series that I had emailed out, which is uh, more than willing to uh, post for the public or to uh, hand that out. Um, but in those email series identified the revenue sources, all revenue sources, identified the expenditures, and then where that shortfall was coming into play. Um, and then in the shortfall language, we talked in those emails, um, I gave you the information about how that levy supported those shortfalls. So I can get a little bit more detail about that, but in the options, it doesn't necessarily show like how that lines out with the shortfall or that cut amount. And I guess I want to I want to thank everybody who has communicated with us. I mean, we have heard from a, a lot of people. I mean, I haven't been able because I also regularly work. Um, so it's this is my other half of my this is my other work. Um, but I I've heard it from a lot of people, and I hear you know I've heard a lot that want the levy. I've also heard from those who don't want the levy, and I think there was, you know, one person, a couple, one person talked about a food audit, and I think every three years we do do a food audit. We will be doing of our department. We will be doing one coming up this year. I believe so. Um, and, and then we do. I want, you know, we are looking at the junior high. Obviously, what are the solutions? Does that mean because we know that is a it's an expenditure, it's a sink. Ever since I've been on the board from 2015, it is something I've looked at and we've wanted to do, but we have to look at it seriously. Whatever that decision is, but we have to go through the process that we need to, that's, that we are by law supposed to go through. So um, I think those are the things, I know that there's other issues that are people have brought up. Um, I don't think we cannot vote for a levy. It's the amount that we need to decide on. And when I say us, I want to put it out to the public. You all deserve the right to vote on it. However it comes out at the end of the day, to me, it's the, it's the community that has the right to vote on it. So we just have to decide, in my mind, we have to decide what's that going to look like that we're going to put out to you. Well, and I was keeping track of all the emails, but I lost track after 120. And that was just for the levy, and then I had less than 15 against the levy that were emailed in. And so, again, we have to look at what the community is outpouring to us. And so, I'm definitely in favor of the levy. Now we just need to decide what the amount should be. And again, the two requests that I would have, which we are meeting, is that we look at the junior high and that we look at the dollar per student amount. And I think that we've got those committees going forward in our strategic plan, five-year strategic plan. <laughs> and our workbooks. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, they get bigger after a couple of years. <laughs> the workbooks cause part of the shortfall. <laughs> This, That's the learning material. This is part of this is my paper. <laughs> <I'm up here. laughs> so, um, I don't. Um, I guess I'm trying to think of what else we might need to express. I mean, I think we've gone through. We've tried to do our due diligence. We've definitely tried to be look at those not numbers, look at the work, you know, do the work sessions, spent hours looking at it. 
thanking the staff for bringing the numbers forward thanking stephy for you know crunching spending hours bringing numbers to us um, in fact, um i'm sorry to interrupt Marty, but i'm gonna forget if i don't stephy would you mind during this session if we could just express um one of the teachers shared a spreadsheet absolutely so we can yeah. do them that's a very good tool that we can all look at and just get an idea of when we look at the five million and the 4.7 just gives us a good breakdown for taxes and i think it's going to help so it helped me with my 30 percent increase last uh, year what gross property value did you want me to put in um let's do the median and then like maybe a five hundred thousand. okay because that's and i want to while she's doing that i want to comment that i also heard from people who are not residents but own property up at Priest Lake who aren't benefiting from sending their kids here or whatever, but they voted, they expressed their inter, you know, their importance of um, funding our schools. Okay. So that's, you know, they really felt it was important to do so. is the median that I received from the county assessor. And what was the other value that you wanted to look Oh, wait a minute. Let, let, let's, let's, you have to change the... Um, I have to explain what? No, no, no. You have to change the total under levy total, I think. Don't you have to spend the... No, it's the same. No. Okay. Okay, got it. You left it. Never mind. My bad. My bad, my bad. Okay. So. And then the next number was 500000 well, so explain it. Okay, so how far back do we want to explain? The, the rate? Just this. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so this column E, we have the levy total. So uh, the $5 million levy, 4.7, 4.5 gross property value. Uh, this is the input. So whatever gross property value you want to look at. And then we have our homeowner's exemption. Uh, this was for the last year in 2023, supposed to be projected at 150,000. And therefore the net taxable for property owner is in column I. And then we have column J representing the levy amount paid by the property owner and the cost per month. So if you own your property at $393,000, you owe $25 a month. Correct. For that is how you read the spreadsheet, yes. For the $5 million. Yes. For the $5 million levy. For roughly $300 a year. Yeah. Yep, the annual amount. And I can, we can plug in whatever gross property value uh, it's a fairly simple <coughs> calculation, but it gets even five. Okay. Oh, that looks like five. Uh, yeah. She said five hundred thousand. She did. She did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ignore me. <laughs> Never. And note that in. And, and note that the homeowner's exemption is going up to 150000 for people right. for next this year. So that will. And then one other thing that was brought up, I think is important, is that there is the um, Sandy circuit. or Candy? Circuit, circuit Breaker. Circuit breaker um, the Circuit Breaker that for, um, for residents who are at least 65 or older who have a minimum. Um, Income or an income of thirty-five thousand dollars or thirty-five, thirty-three thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars. Or they make a year. Also, off of that, which I didn't say earlier, if you have any out-of-pocket medical, they take that medical expense off that thirty-three eighty eight hundred and seventy dollars. That comes off because you're paying the medical bill. So the state, the the counties. Subtracts that from that thirty-three thousand eight hundred and seventy. So if they have any out-of-pocket medical, 
which a lot of us older people do, uh, uh, that comes off, and then the, then the state reimburses between $250 on your taxes to $1,500 on your, on your tax, property taxes. You have to do it at the assessor's office. Once a year, they come down to the senior citizens and work with the older people to do it. Okay. And they will help you. Okay. Any other comments? I don't think so. Do you want to comment? Do you have anything? Um, if we're going to, we're deciding. Are we? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure I can really decide on the dollar amount. I said, this is, it's very hard to decide on a dollar amount because for me, when I ran for this seat, I told people I would not have taxation without representation. And since I got on this board, I've asked to tear this budget apart, just, just shred it so that everybody here could really see <coughs> what's being spent and where. I think all of you have a right to that. I mean, over the last 10 years, we have pumped 32 plus million dollars into this community from supplemental or levy, depending on what term you want to use. And we still have schools that are crumbling. <coughs> and we have kids that have a proficiency rate that is beyond low. And I'm not talking about the ISATs, and I'm not talking about the graduation rate, because I totally agree with you. That is a problem we still need to take to Boise. We should not, as a district, have to hunt down where our students are to find out if they graduated in order for our graduation rate to be correct. And unfortunately, that's the ridiculous way that it's run right now. Um, you know, I, I don't know if Ms. Dodd is here tonight, but I want to thank you for your really wonderful email. You shared a lot of good information with me. Um, just like everybody else, um, our emails have blown up. And this has not been a fun process at all. Um, we've looked at numbers, I think, to the point where we're brain dead, honestly. And... As many people have said, I don't think there's anyone in this room that is against children and them being able to truly have a shot at the moon. They deserve to have the best education they possibly can. We have some amazing teachers. And then we have some teachers that just come for a couple of years and they move on. That doesn't mean they're bad teachers. It just means that that does account for our turnover because a lot of people don't want to listen to that aspect of it, but it makes it hard on the kids. They get adjusted to having a teacher. They really like them. They like to see them in the hallway. I mean, it's, it's a feel good for them. And I get that because I taught for a long time. And you want the very best for kids. But looking at this budget, Ever since April of last year, I've not gotten a clear answer on where money really goes. I mean, we spend $100,000 just in the heating utilities of the junior high every year. And that's money truly out the window because they're all single pane. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not blowing anything up there. It's, it's a fact. Um, and then we have a big district as far as mileage, you're right. Um, we don't have homes in all of those miles, so we're not making stops at all of them, but we do have a big district. And we do have five schools. But you gotta look at the realistic aspects in the world right now. We got banks unfolding. We've got people that have stopped with the purchase of their home or building a home because they're scared to death these interest rates are just going sky high and 
you know, in, in Kootenai, they ran five levees and four crashed and burned because people said right now, let's not do this. We can't afford it. We don't know where, where our money, you know, needs to be spent. And I think everybody here would agree, you do have to look at putting food on the table for your kids and utilities and so forth. Um, I'm just at a point where I really, I want a forensic audit. I want to be sure that everything you guys are putting into this is where it's supposed to go. I want people to feel very comfortable that we're doing the right thing. I mean, Susie Lucky wouldn't be still teaching here if she wasn't dedicated to wanting the best. I mean, you go into Idaho Hills, you better step toe because she's going to be watching where you're at. She's got these kids, you know, in, in, in a row. She knows how to run that school. But we also can't just be foolish and say we're just going to throw something at it. I mean, if that was the case and money worked, government would be perfect. And we all know that's exactly not what's happening. Um, we seriously have to get rid of the junior high. And I know that it's an icon to, to the community, and that doesn't mean blowing it up or dismantling it. It means we have to release that dinosaur from our book so that we can move forward and you know, not be just throwing that money out the window. Um, I just... Susan, I, oh, sorry. I have one, because you keep throwing that we put 32 million out there. What I figure is we've actually given the state structure of the formula for funding education and the fact that they no longer give us $3 a thousand. We've actually <laughs> not, we should have been spending 64 million or 60 yeah, yeah. million yeah. because we basically, we have been always at half of that amount that we were when we were like at 2006, 2007, when they flipped. And if we went back, if you know, I don't want to share Jared's because he put a lot of personal information up there, but if you looked at the mill rate, you've got to look at it the flip side. We used to get $3 a thousand. And that, in my mind, on a rough average, because we're running out of $1.47, even if it weren't $64 million, I bet we, would, we should have gotten $50 million into this community, not $32 million. Yeah. Buy that, that property oh, tax, and, I'm, I'm not and I think it. But saying, the thing is that if you nickel and that. dime somebody to death, you're not getting your best. You're not. You're not retaining your teachers. And, and I totally respect what you're saying. But I'm also thinking in the the other the flip way is that we we got shied some money that we probably should have gotten to keep us running to the level we wanted to run. Okay. Any more comments? But I yeah. I, okay. Are you, you still got more? No, because I could go on all night. Okay. You got anything to say? I just think that we let the voters decide. I'm, I'm tired of being blamed for everything. Let the voters take it out. They vote one time, everybody accepts it. Whatever it is, whether it passes or fails. Okay. That's just in this community. We've got, got to start dealing. We can't keep fighting with each other. We've got to understand that we're all trying to do the right thing. And this, this fight is bullshit. I agree, but there is fiduciary responsibility. Yes. Absolutely. That you have. Do we all get public comment? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the consideration, I got, I got something to say. The consideration of this levy started probably last June when the board was presented with a budget to approve uh, without any prior review. Uh, we were told to, it had to be approved before the end of June for state regulations. Then we were told we could amend the budget any time, still waiting. This last February, we started the process to consider a levy for the May election. S since we would be going to taxpayer to ask for funds, I thought we would be giving the budget a serious look to evaluate the district's operations to make sure they were operating in the most efficient way since Past levies were justified because of unfunded mandates, high transportation costs, etc. This board has spent hours poring over every piece of financial data provided to us. 
listen to principals, department heads, and other people trying to get a handle what a functioning budget would look like. In the end, we were presented with three levy options. And now we're looking at um, considering taking us to $5 million being the lowest. <clears throat> As taxpayers, what do you get for a $5 million investment in our district? Um, we would increase spending to now, if we go with a $5 million, to over $14,000 per student. Okay? Well, do the simple math. Don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. Okay, fourteen thousand dollars per student. Okay, Lake Condoré spends ten thousand seven hundred twenty-one. Boundary is eleven thousand two hundred. Lakeland is ten thousand five hundred. Coeur d'Alene is eleven thousand. Post Falls is nine thousand five hundred. And the state Idaho average is nine thousand. The weighted rule average is nine nine thousand nine hundred thirty-six. If more money spent, if if more money meant better school performance, given the above statistics, one would think we would be leading the pack, but nothing could be further from the truth. We're last in graduation rates at 62%. We're last in ISAT's test scores just over 44%. Contrast that to Lakeland with a graduation rate of over 90% at a spending rate of 10,500 per student. Coeur d'Alene has an average of ISAT stat of ISAT test score of 54% at spending rate of 11,000. The irony is, the longer a student stays in our district, the worse the score gets. In summary, our district spends more than all other school districts but are last in graduation and test scores. Since 2013, again, we have spent $32 million in levies. And all this is what we have to show for it. Okay, I've heard from many people in this district who are fed up as I am. Um, to the senders of the hate mails and to the gentleman who sent me a voicemail death threat and I turned it over to the police. I didn't create this mess and I can't in all good conscience pass it on to, the, to a, the taxpayer to continue funding this. And you understand, I'm going to make a motion to approve the levy at $4.7 million. Okay. Because I will say, because if we don't approve anything, and that's a minimal, and I understand what you're saying, but I also looked, I pulled down the expenditures for full-term ADA. Um, I looked at what you were saying, but I know that other school districts, such as Genesee at Joint, Kendrick Joint, Hot Latch Joint, are 15857 with everything added. That's in maintenance and, maintenance and instruction. 16215 14146 and this is 2021 number, 2020-2021 numbers. Um, there's a jump, and then I also asked about why was, what were some of the issues that went into our um, why we were so high, we tend to have a more vulnerable population that we have to have more, we potentially have more classified staff to, to support those. Um, I know that you looked at Boundary County and they have about the same um, transportation dist you know, changes, but I would say, and we have two, a city council person, two city council members here, if we don't pass anything, this town, this city, this area is going to be devastated. And so I'm going to put at least something out there that says that I think we can move forward on the strategic plan. The whole idea of doing that strategic plan, we've never done it before. We were trying to get everything lined up. We were trying to get the whole thing moving forward. And now to me is like you've screamed through all this stuff. You screamed through the curves. Okay. Um, the end line's that door, and you just put on the brakes. You made a motion for 4.7. Is there a 4. second? 7. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor of a $4.7 million levy, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Okay, the, the motion carries.
Next on the agenda, um, do I hear a motion to appoint uh, to appoint a negotiator for a uh, separation agreement? Um, what's our option? Uh, I'll, should I bring it to the table? I'll make yes. a motion to bring it to the table to appoint a negoti negotiator for separation agreement. Okay, Trustee I'll Halls uh, makes a motion. I'll second that. Uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds. Open for discussion. Uh, this is a new one for us. Who do we appoint? Should this be a, an attorney? All we're, doing, all we're doing is, a, is a making, we're going to form this. We're not talking about the. We're just making a motion. Yeah. To making a motion. Oh, okay. to make a motion to appoint. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll make a motion to appoint. So I'll. Okay. And, uh, I second. So she, uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds it. To appoint who as the negotiator. We're going to want to appoint a trustee as the negotiator. Oh, oh, I misunderstood. Get, that's okay. okay. And okay. then it will get brought back to the board for final approval. Okay. Yes. Who, who wants to be a negotiator? Someone make a motion to appoint someone? Probably should be. In the what? last role, it was the chair. When I was doing the contract negotiations, yes. um, do we need? Do we? Need I don't know. I've never done this before. So is it either that's why I'm saying it's yeah. new territory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the chair. If you feel comfortable doing that, I will appoint the chair, Chair Rutledge, as the um, separation agreement negotiator. Okay. A second. I second that. Okay. Trustee Hall first. Uh, Vice Chairman Brown second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hey, no, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Um, you could oppose yourself. No, that's <laughs> fine. Uh, appoint <coughs> negotiator for interim su superintendent contract. I will make a motion to appoint negotiator for interim superintendent contract. Okay. I'll second that. Trustee <laughs> Hall uh, makes a motion to. We're bringing it to the table. So I'll uh, make, I'm sorry, a motion negotiator to. Bring it to, the table. to um, for an inter interim super superintendent contract, Trustee Brown or Vice Chair Brown. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Chairman or Trustee Barton seconds. <coughs> Do you want to make a motion? Um, um, usually, it's you've got a lot on your plate. It, you can we can appoint anyone, but it's usually been the chair. Okay, fine. If you, we, I would make a motion to appoint. Um, Chair Rutledge as the negotiator to interim superintendent contract. Second. Good second. Okay, Trustee Hall um, first and, and uh, Vice Chair Brown second. All those in favor of uh, by, or uh, um, you. me <laughs> as a point <laughs> negotiator for interim su uh, superintendent contract, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second, I'll second that. The guys are quick. 60 hours ago.